Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Tektronix Type 109 pulse generator. And look real careful at the text right there. It's 250 picosecond rise time. That is a little bit interesting. I think uh, this one <laughs> it consists of a mercury switch. It also says here at the front. I went to uh, the tech wiki page. Uh, I will put a link to this in the description. So please go there and look uh, up the entire detail about this instrument. There is a, a smaller part of this page that explains about this special special mercury component and it only works for 200 hours then it needs to be replaced so uh, i can't wait to open this one and see what is inside i can see this output connector here is broken a little bit those are the they call them unisex connectors so they're not male or female they uh, work both ways and uh, then you can select to have external power like this and then you come with some external voltage all the way to 300 volts actually and then it goes to your mercury switch and there you have your output in 50 ohms and the idea is you have two different charge lines containing some coax that's a 50 ohm terminated coax but at different length or whatever length you want to have and this sets the pulse duration and then the rise time is just this switch rise time so it actually shows here at the front there is a switch so there's a power supply and a little oscillator and this oscillator let you adjust the frequency between 500 and 700 hertz yeah so let's open and inspect first of all oh yikes i just took away the side panel and Look at all that nasty dust. So I better go out and clean a little bit. And then we can have a deeper look. Ooh, there's a magnet and some stuff. Maybe this is where all the cool thing happens. Where's all the mercury? So I try to clean it a little bit. This is the classic ceramic component solder strip here. And this looks a little bit weird. What is going on with this diode? You got some two AC outputs, it goes to the, some diodes. And then what? I mean, what is the purpose of that? It doesn't really look at that. It appears not to go anywhere. That is some weird stuff. I don't understand. Over voltage protection or some. Hmm, I better consult the schematic because that seems to be a little bit weird. Here we got four diodes. This looks like a classic bridge with a little current protection resistor here. And then it probably goes, those two wires here probably goes to down to some of those capacitors and all that. And that would probably be for the little oscillator or the power supply or something like that. And we got a little interesting component down here and here. So let's uh, flip it around and see what is going on there. Isn't that a very, very interesting detail? So look at that transistor here. It is in a socket. And right next to that transistor is a tube. Voltage regulator tube. <laughs> I just really love it. And what is that one doing? That is also a very interesting component. Maybe that is called TC601. Whatever that is. Frequency we can adjust right there, 100 volt set point, and all these wires 
for this part. That is probably the Mercury switcher, and in here is... I don't understand exactly what is going on in here. Oh, oh, look here! Maybe here it is. So this is the magnetic activator coil right there with all the feedback and drive and whatnot and then the magnetic field goes in here and down there is the little mercury switch somehow so the idea is you disconnect it i don't know how you swap this it should be in a socket or something because you change these every 200 hours only so maybe I need to consult the schematic to figure out how to unscrew this. And what is this magnet doing right there? That looks interesting. It's... <laughs> I really don't know. It's definitely something out of this world. Wow. Yeah, we better consult the, the manual in a second. So here is what I've done. The low voltage output from the transformer and the diodes I showed earlier, they just go to a capacitor and voltage regulator. So there's a linear voltage regulator with a, a variable DC voltage. And this goes to a self oscillating uh, system that's using this transformer with some windings that goes into the transistors and I should of course show the schematic so you can see this uh, the power drive to this uh, oscillator transformer system and um, by adding or applying the voltage here we can just measure what is going on in this oscillator so let's try and do that it's using quite a lot of power so look at all that is the power drive and um, we got 250 Hertz I dialed the frequency down to the lowest uh, possible by this uh, frequency here this is actually a voltage so now listen carefully can you hear let's hear so you we can actually hear that something is moving in this transformer drive uh, system. So the switch here is on external power. The two B and C connectors for external power goes to a plus minus 10 volt supply. And here is the thing. The output From that relay we've got some resistors and all that right the output is in 50 ohm mode and that is this line here and it's not moving at all there's no pulses to anything here at all so that means this mercury switch is not moving at all why not of course it is broken could maybe try and move it or give it but see no response whatsoever so I am now forced to completely disassemble this whole thing and see if we can get into this little mercury switch luckily I found the manual as well and in the manual they say how to exchange the mercury switch using those two screws and first I need to remove the magnet I didn't really understand what the magnet is good for maybe I should pay a little bit deeper attention to the manual but maybe I will get to that but yeah let's try and pull this uh, mercury switch out because so far nothing really uh, works but we got the oscillator running at least here is a little snip I found in the manual it says the, what the permanent magnet is doing 
it's actually providing a magnetic bias for the read uh, relay. So it is a read uh, relay, but it's also a merc there is mercury inside the read relay. Um, I don't have exactly a full understanding about what exactly this mercury or the vapor from the mercury is doing good, but I think it has something to do with the the way that the switch can uh, can go really really fast for some reason. Here is another little snip from the manual that shows and explains exactly how to remove the mercury switch. It also says it needs to be replaced after 200 hours. That is really wild. Can you imagine buying a product that only works for 200 hours and, and you need to solder it and all the wires around it and it's actually really difficult to take out and it's insanely expensive. Back in 62, it was $55. So this is the magnet, and here is the little mercury switch. You can, let me try and go a little bit closer, like that. We can, we can see there's liquid, like, plop. Why do we have liquid mercury in there? Because it's just like a read relay. This little, little pin that goes up here and can move between those two outputs and the magnet here. I don't know. Let's see if I can. Can I photo this somehow? Yeah, like that, maybe. So if I. Yeah, maybe you can see the pin inside moves. But there is no contact whatsoever. So this little thing moves with the magnets and there's this this i believe just moves or pre-magnetizes or something like that to maybe move it in the middle or whatever and then the ac field from this system moves it from that point somehow but you will when this is just not working but why how is it possible this is not working? And why is it f full of mercury in the bottom? That is a big mystery to me. What is the what is the point? Is it the vapors we need or I don't know why how and how this really works because it just don't work. Too bad. Well, I just give up for now. There's no way in this world I will ever, ever see a new Mercury switch for this one. They had a lifetime of only 200 hours. And this is, of course, explained in the manual. So, uh, yeah, so that is what it is. This unit definitely goes back. We cannot have any more fun with that one. So thank you very much for watching. At least you had a little bit of fun watching how this unit was designed, what was the idea and uh, all that kind of stuff, I think, and I hope so. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.